you remember from our last vlog, we were going to take you today to Dunstaffnage Castle and Chapel, which is still a Campbell property, and it belongs to the Campbells of Argyle. And as promised, we're going to take you on a walkthrough of this castle, as well as the chapel afterwards. And we're going to use our DJI Pocket 2 video camera that we're actually using right now to film this intro. Following our visit to Dunstaffnage, we will take you to Barkeldean Castle, which actually has been turned into a luxury, I guess you'd say, hotel, bed and breakfast type accommodation, which we stayed at for the next two nights. Also, this is a Campbell Castle being the property of Black Duncan Campbell. And then to wrap things up, we will spend the evening in Oban, where we had dinner and walked a little bit around the harbor. So, as you see, we've got a lot to fit in this video. It's probably going to take a little bit longer than our average video in this series, but we hope you'll enjoy what you see and come along with us. Grab your popcorn and a bottle of water. Let's get started with the rest of our May 7th, Day 4 in Scotland. Our journey from Castle Stalker in Appen would continue along the A828 towards the Oban Airport and across the Connell Bridge. We'll see the bridge a couple times later in our video. The parking lot for Dunstaffnage Castle, or as they say in the UK, the car park, looks directly out at the little bay near Dunstaffnage Marina. Before walking up to the castle, we took a few moments to look out at the boats on this beautiful day. The castle is just a short walk from there, and you saw some of our approach in last week's video. Dunstaffnage Castle is a partially ruined castle in Argyll and Butte, Western Scotland. It lies three miles north-northeast of Oban, and is built on a large formation of rock at the southwest entrance of Loch Hedyf. The castle and its nearby chapel ruin have been an historic environment Scotland property since 1958, and both are scheduled ancient monuments. We proceeded up the path to check in at the desk in the gift shop to the right of the castle, and were greeted by a friendly gentleman named Donald Campbell, which we found rather interesting as one of Dale's late uncles here at home in the States was also named Donald Campbell. The castle itself was built in the 13th century, somewhere before the year 1240, by Clan MacDougall, making it one of Scotland's oldest stone castles, and it has been held since the 15th century, somewhere around the 1460s, by Clan Campbell, who updated it and added to it. Donald told us about the fact that Dunstaffnage is still a Clan Campbell property and still has an official hereditary captain of Dunstaffnage, a title that has been passed down for numerous generations, though the castle's days of use as a clan stronghold have long been gone. This captain not only retains his title by spending one to three nights per year in the castle, but he also retains the right to be buried in the chapel, we'll see later, alongside his parents. This first room, as the sign says, is a guardhouse. Interesting that so many of the castles, the majority of living was actually done outside in the courtyard and not in interior rooms or buildings. Yeah, what you don't see here is all the wooden structures that would have been built inside the stone walls. They're long gone. That archway is where the original passageway came through from the front door. This was a well, I believe, right? Yep. This is the, the well for the castle where they would get their water supply. It's always good to have a well inside the stone walls in case you're besieged. <laughs> We're going to head first into the uh, gatehouse here. This was built in the 16th century by Clan Campbell, if I remember right. have a lot of school groups that come to visit for historical tours and they also have games for the kids. Uh, that mat laying out on the floor there looked like a shoots and ladders game.
These stairs were actually not too bad compared to some of the castles we were in. Claudine was not a fan of the spiral stone staircases. We go again to the next floor. This is probably one of the most interactive castles that had stuff for if you had kids with you. Yeah. We didn't try our hand on building an arch. They had a good view of the bay and the surrounding area. You can see why they built the castle here on the strategic point. You can see for quite a distance. Originally, this walkway would have gone all the way around all the walls of the castle, I believe. Obviously, some of it has fallen away. The gatehouse there that we just looked at, that re remains the property of that hereditary captain of Dunstavnage, and he stays there when he uh, makes his yearly visit. This is one of the older towers, and like some of the other places we've been to, you can still see the remains of stairways. You can see places where the beams for the next floor above would have gone into the wall, as well as fireplaces above your head. And almost every room had some vantage point to look out or to fire out of. Or <laughs> yep. Whatever. It's interesting to see the evolution of these buildings. When they started out there more defensive, strategic, and they evolved into more of a residence, fortified residence. fireplaces on the second floor above you. We're actually standing on that second floor looking down at the ground floor. The ground floor here was the kitchen, I think, right? Yep, this is the kitchen below us. And those holes are where all the four joists were. Uh, that would have been the next floor above the one that we're looking at, yeah. I believe is in the third tower on the other corner. And 
now we'll head into that kitchen that we were looking down in. Pretty big chimney. Some of these rooms were pretty interesting in that even in the stonework they had places carved out where like liquid water or whatever could be flushed out the wall. And a lot of places had places where they collected rainwater that would come down and, and pool in a container that they used in the kitchen or elsewhere. That's the walkthrough of the interior of Dunstaff, which we're going to head to the chapel now. Just a short walk through the woods. Now this private chapel was also built by Clan McDougall, if I remember correctly, and then when it became Campbell property, they used it for a time, but also built a burial place inside the chapel itself. I can't remember. It seems like it wasn't terribly long ago that it was still, that he, didn't he tell us this one was still in use? I think the current captain's parents are buried there and yeah. he, he retains the right to be buried alongside his parents. If we have any of those details incorrect, please tell us in the comments below. <laughs> chapels we visited, this one's no exception, a lot of places there would be plaques on the wall that weren't necessarily a place to designate where someone was buried, but was just in mourning of somebody that attended chapel there or was part of the family or something. see later in our road trip series of Scotland some of the other churches we went to there's a lot of those plaques on the walls Leaving Dunstaffnage, our journey back to Barkledean Castle, where we'd stay for the night, would backtrack some of the route that we came on our way there. One of the places we would go back through is the Conal Bridge. If you remember, I mentioned that earlier, that we would see it a couple more times, and this is one of those times you'll see it. But you may have caught sight of it earlier when I was showing some of the pictures of the sailboats in the bay.
So the Kono Bridge is a one-track bridge. There's a light on either end to, um, so you know whether it's your turn to cross or not. Um, you didn't have to wait very long. We actually caught it green almost every time we went over. We didn't have to wait very much. But it was originally a railroad bridge, thus why it's probably a one-lane bridge. But it's not so bad as far as bridges go. It seems pretty sturdy. Probably, again, because it was originally a railroad bridge, so it had to be sturdy for that. But you get a nice view of the lock. After crossing the Conal Bridge, we'll proceed back up the AA-28 to Benderlock, where Barkledin Castle is. To access the road that gets to it, you actually go over this single lane bridge. A little tricky coming in and out of there. We never met anyone at the entrance there, though. Luckily, we didn't. <laughs> On this road, we did. <laughs> and yes, this is a single track lane that goes all the way back to the castle, and we didn't meet traffic coming and going. That's the castle up ahead. We were actually the first people to arrive for our stay. The rest of the rooms that had been booked, all the people arrived after us. And we were met by Caroline Campbell, the wife of the person who used to own this, and he's descended directly from Duncan Campbell, Sir Duncan Campbell, that built this castle. They no longer own it, they've sold it, but they still work there occasionally. first door through our door here, straight ahead is our toilet and sink area. And our shower room is actually on the other side of the bed. You'll see the door to it in a minute, over there. That on the wall really isn't a mirror, it's a TV. Looks like a mirror, but it's actually a smart TV. It's quite interesting. It was also interesting that Caroline told us that her husband, who descended from Duncan Campbell that built the castle, she called him Robbie. So I'm thinking his name is Robert. He was actually working back at Dunstaffinage, but we didn't see him the day when we stopped. Well, I think we caught a glimpse of him because there was a second guy. Oh. That was walking back okay. when we first got there and talked to the other one. It would have been nice to meet him. We did meet their daughter as well. She came in the next day and, and served breakfast. And then we headed back to Oban for dinner. our route back to Oban would take us back over the Conal Bridge. I mentioned earlier that Oban is the seafood capital of Western Scotland. A lot of the uh, small harbor towns up and down the coast, on both sides of Scotland, east coast and west coast, still have active fishing fleets. 
Some are just local fishing fleets, but Oban is one of the places where you'll see some of the larger boats that go out. It was pretty easy to find parking there, I thought. Very nice night as we walked along the harbor there. And we ate dinner at a restaurant right here on the main street looking out over the harbor. There's some of the fishing boats. That white building there toward the left that we just passed, uh, that is a tavern that's been in operation since the 1700s. And then we're back at Barkledean, finished our evening. Before we went to bed, we visited the great room where we had an assigned table for our breakfast in the morning. There are two different secret passageways in this room leading to stairs within the wall. They would have been used by servants. Well, that brings us to the end of our May 7th, fourth day in Scotland. We hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of Dunstaffnage Castle and the chapel. We hope you enjoyed looking at Barkaldeen Castle, where we spent two nights, as well as a quick look at Oban, where we would be the next morning in our next video when we took a ferry out to the island of Mall. Plenty of single track driving there. There was a lot of single track driving, and we got a little mixed up at one point because the GPS was behind and had to turn around, and a little bit of a stressful trip for me a little bit a little bit <laughs> but very pretty island glad we went yep we enjoyed the drive out mm -hmm. or at least i did mm -hmm. <laughs> you enjoyed the scenery once we got there uh, we went out to calgary bay and the reason that i wanted to go there was because we've been to calgary alberta and i wanted to go to calgary bay in scotland so on the island of mall we drove from tobermory over to calgary bay and that drive is coming up in our next video so we hope you'll stay tuned and come back and join us and enjoy some more single track driving. Thanks for following along. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up. <laughs>